Hello again to all the listeners this week. I'm your host, Brad Jost, and today I wanted to discuss the most recent video essay from Mike Hill. You may remember the video that he did on the subtext of Jurassic Park. I talked a little bit about that video back in episode 51 of the podcast, so make sure to check that one out. But back then, he didn't just talk about Jurassic Park and all its merits, albeit going a bit overboard with some of his points. He decidedly trashed Jurassic World in the process. Now this is an ongoing theme inside and outside of the community, pulling down Jurassic World because it's just not the masterpiece that is Jurassic Park. And in Mike Hill's case, Jurassic World just makes him plain angry. So that brings me to his latest video, Jurassic World Jurassic Values from Industry Workshops 2016. Now, if you haven't seen his video yet, the point of his essay is to say that Claire is not the role model that the creators thought they were putting on the screen. He weaves in and out of video clips from the film to support his ideas, but by doing so is completely misleading the audience. His whole argument is based off this quote here from Jurassic World director Colin Trevorrow, where he speaks with BadTaste.it about Joss Whedon calling him out on that original released Claire and Owen scene. I wonder why Universal chose a clip like that. That shows an isolated situation within a movie that has an internal logic. That starts with characters that are almost archetypes, stereotypes that are deconstructed as the story progresses. The real protagonist of the movie is Claire, and we embrace her femininity in the story's progression. There's no need for a female character that does things like a male character. That's not what makes interesting female characters in my view. Bryce and I have talked a lot about these concepts and aspects of her character. So that's the quote he didn't like, but here's Mike's introduction. This quote makes me angry on a lot of levels, and I want to take you through why by first showing a series of clips with a few adjustments where I've edited the hotspots of basically Claire's development as a character. He's basically outlining the biggest problem I have with this video. He's editing in hotspots. So what that means is he's forging the video he wants to show you to support his theories. I'm not exactly sure what type of journalistic integrity he's got going here uh, by showing you clips out of order and to his liking. Now, the first hot spot is uh, a shot in an argument between Claire and Owen inside the control room as the ACU team is trying to track down the Indominus Rex. In his very loose version of the film, Claire is the one shooting down Owen's proposals to evacuate the park and pull the men back in. In Mr. Hill's presentation, he is directly basing his theory on his version of this scene. An incorrect version. Now, here is the correct audio with the person who's actually calling the shots. The implant will shock it if it gets too close to a perimeter fence. Okay, it's moving really fast. This is control put out a park-wide alert. Hang up the damn phone, please. Sorry, I'm getting new information. Everything's fine. Let asset containment capture it quietly. The very existence of this park is predicated on our ability to handle incidents like this. It was an eventuality, okay? You should put that in the brochure. Eventually, one of these things will eat somebody. That paddock is four miles from the closest attraction. They say you can handle this. No one else is going to get eaten. Now, as you just heard, Simon Mizrani is the one pulling the strings, commanding the troops, and ordering down the evacuation. Our scene takes place earlier in the film, after it's already been established several times that Mizrani is the boss. Claire had no choice in the matter, and if you pay attention to any basic visual cues from that scene, you can see her body language is saying she doesn't fully agree with that call. She absolutely feels hesitation in that moment. Another factor to bring up here is Mizrani is calling these shots based off the fact that his ACU team is built to handle interactions with dinosaurs. This is their job. It was meant to work, and they were supposed to bring the Indominus back into captivity. You know, he placed a bet on this interaction, and unfortunately it didn't pay off. And now you're blaming Claire for that? So Mike Hill compares the ACU scene to the film Aliens and Ripley's reaction to basically the same scenario. Let's face it though, you cannot compare these two characters. First off, the footage he showed us was from Aliens. You heard it, the second film in the series. So what kind of sense does that make? Wait till Jurassic World 2 comes out and then we can talk, because I bet you anything that Claire is a vastly different person than who she was in Jurassic World. Her personality will ultimately be different uh, based on her prior experiences, so let's just be honest and wipe this argument straight off the table. If you want to argue it further, they are just two completely different characters in different situations with very different backgrounds. So in what world would you expect them to make the same calls? 
All right, but moving on, because basically there's nothing to even argue about. It's just plain and simple. Next, he shows us the infamous kiss. Okay, yes, the kiss is pretty cringeworthy, but can we not blame this all on Claire? She is pulled in by Owen for a kiss after she smashes a dinosaur with a gun and shoots the thing straight up to save Owen. This is a complete role reversal for most films in the same action genres. It's really not too often that you see a strong female character coming in, dominating an assailant, and saving the man from imminent death. But here Claire does just that. So I can excuse the bad timing of the kiss. If you want to blame someone, blame Owen for that moment of weakness. Oh, and it also doesn't happen the way Mr. Hill presents it. There's no flashing back and forth between Zara dying and Owen and Claire kissing. So at the point of Zara's demise, Claire has no clue where the kids or Zara even are. So what kind of comparison is this? And to our benefit, she literally sprints in 10 seconds later and starts screaming to find the kids. So since we're speaking of Zara, Mike Hill makes the point that Zara did nothing wrong, but died anyway. I'm sorry though, most deaths in films, or life for that matter, are not deserved. No matter how much a person is set up as a villain in this series, they've never really deserved their death. Deserving a death is a very sensitive subject, and this is not the type of film where there's clear-cut characters that should be taken out for some heinous crime. This is a story about dinosaurs wreaking havoc and not caring who they devour. I can tell you for sure that not one dinosaur in any of the four films thought about it for one moment before they took that bite. It's just not how the world works, Mike. Continuing on, Mr. Hill brings up characters from Alien, comparing Claire to Ripley again. Uh, here's a clip. I started thinking a bit more about it, and I started thinking, is Claire Ripley? Well, God no. Ripley sacrifices to save Newt. She tries to save the troops. Is she Gorman? No, because Gorman sacrifices himself because he realized he's done something immoral and he was weak. And then I realized, Claire is Burke. Oh, Mike. Mike Hill. I'm not even sure that you watched Jurassic World. Seriously? So you're missing the part I mentioned before where she saves Owen with the butt and the trigger of a gun, drives the kids to safety while being chased by raptors, and literally sacrifices her well-being by standing in front of a T-Rex to coax it out of its paddock, which leads to the salvation of the remaining characters on the island. So Mike, Please strike that portion of your video essay, reverse it, and give Claire a little bit more credit. If you're gonna compare her to Burke and Aliens, who, as you said, got people killed and ended up dying, you've got things all wrong. Remember when I played that correct audio with Mizrani calling the shots and being the one who got everybody killed? Yeah, well, he's the one who died in a fiery helicopter crash. It paid off, exactly the way you wanted it to. You just completely missed that, I guess. Not really sure how. The next portion of Mr. Hill's essay is where he hates the dialogue between Owen and Claire at the very end of the film. Take a listen. Now, we embrace her femininity. Now, the actual dialogue in that scene, she looks to the man and says, what do we do now? How exactly has this woman evolved? She hasn't. She ends the film literally asking for guidance from the male. How the hell is that embracing femininity? That's femininity in 1941. Like, what planet is Colin Trevorrow living on? that he thinks that this is a strong female protagonist. So this is just another moment where he lays on way too much context over a portion of the film that really shouldn't be overanalyzed. In no way is Claire bowing down before Owen, handing over her rights to the male character who will forever own her. No, that's not what's happening here. I've got some great audio lent to us by Jack Ewens from Jurassic Cast, where he also put together a great rant about this very video. Take a listen. I think that you know, Owen's response is what the important part of that is. He doesn't give her an answer. He doesn't say, uh, you know, this is what we should do um, in terms of like, I'm right, you're wrong, you've been wrong. He says, we should probably, probably stick together for survival. What I think he means by that is... Well, one, he says probably, so he's still not entirely sure. <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way. The word probably is in there. And he says stick together for survival. Now, why would he say that to Claire when she asks him, what do we do now? She's clearly asking that because, you know, her whole life's now been turned upside down by these events. And she's now in a completely different place than where she was at the start of the film. Um, and he says that response because she bashed a dimorphodon's head in with the butt of a gun and took it out and saved his life. He says we should probably stick together for survival 
because he knows that Claire can look after him as well as he can look after her. And this isn't about, uh, you know, which sex is better. She's not looking to Owen to say, what do I do, men? She's not uh, saying that completely. She's saying that, you know, what do we do? Because I've just lost everything and I'm in a completely different place. And he says we should stick together for survival. It's a love story. Every Jurassic Park film has uh, a view of relationships. The first film has Grant and Ellie. They're together. They're debating about having kids. In the second film, you've got Malcolm with his girlfriend. They have an adopted kid or, or, or however that family works out. And it's about them learning to work together. The third film is all about divorced parents learning to come together to save their child who can actually save himself. And the third film, uh, fourth film, is about two people who have had a couple of dates who don't, you know, they clearly have some connection, but they still got some things to iron out. And and true uh, through the uh, the events, their love is 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 forming. So by the end of the film, they're looking at each other as a couple. I don't. It's not about which one is better. And I think he's looked into that way too much. I never thought, you know that she looked at him and was like, what do we do, men, because we're inferior females? Because if she, if that was meant, then why the hell in the film would they have a scene where she, uh, you know, shoots the dimorphodon to rescue Owen, um, you know, saves the kids in the medivan from the velociraptors by driving the truck away and luring the T-Rex out of his paddock, you know, facing a T-Rex down by herself. And, you know, it's... She's an awesome character. There's no denying that she, you know, in my opinion, there's no denying that she does some pretty damn good things. And, you know, yes, she's not likable at the beginning of the film, but that's the point. She she grows to be likable through as the film goes. See, Mike, way too deep, man. I'm sure at some point, whether male or female, we've all asked our significant others, friends or family... So what do we do now? Without having to relinquish our identities. Now, the last point I wanted to bring up are his thoughts on the character of Zack. That for some reason he thought was beneficial to add to this discussion. Let me play you the audio because it's uh, it's going to blow your mind. It's a, it, it's a little bit sensitive to our younger listeners, so beware. Frankly, there's another character which I'm not even going to go into. Like Zack, the guy that's eyeballing all the girls at the park. When he's got a girlfriend that says in the first two minutes of the movie, says, I love you. And two minutes later, he's trying to get laid and is a sexual predator. And it never gets concluded. Now, these are role models for children. This is what heroes are supposed to be. We've got a selfish and a future rapist. And children are looking at Zach and going, this is the protagonist. This is the social standard. Like, it, it makes me really angry because we're supposed to have cinema that inspires people. Like, not just technically, but morally. And this is not that. This giant steaming turd of HD VFX glory, apparently, has wasted thousands of years of human experience selling people an incredibly immoral message. And I didn't talk about it before, so I just wanted to get that out and hope that maybe it will basically start raising some questions about how we write movies. Wow. Just, there's there's really no words. I can't, I can't believe it. He just called Zach a sexual predator and a future rapist. Seriously? Yes, okay, Zack is certainly staring a bit much and didn't return the love to his girlfriend back home, but can we in all seriousness call him a future rapist? To me, this completely tarnishes any decent point Mike Hill brought up ever. It's To me, it's really uncalled for and completely invalidates his points. Zack is a teenage boy who has a decent character arc in this movie and is essentially the cause of the central plot point in this film. At no point should this perfectly normal teenage boy be considered a rapist for the completely normal actions of a teenage boy staring at girls. It happens. It's a way of life. Now, I have a few thoughts from people around the community who have some encouraging words for the hero of our story. Claire, take a listen. The one way I would describe Claire is out of her element. Like, Mm -hmm. um, Like a good course in the movie she's in heels but that's because that's who she is i mean i love that they didn't try to change her character too drastically and they they kept her the same but they threw obstacles at her and she handled them the best she knew how in the business that she knew and i thought thing would be so unrealistic if they made her this superhero 
of the movie. I mean, that's why they have three films. Hopefully by the end of the third one, she'll be there. Claire isn't a perfect character at the beginning of the film. She makes mistakes because if she didn't make mistakes, it's what's known as a Mary Sue. It, it, she becomes a, a bland character that you, you you don't care about unless you know it's played in a way like Owen, where Owen does everything right. But Owen can get away with being a Mary Sue. Ian Malcolm can get away with being a Mary Sue in Jurassic Park because in, in because you've got Grant in Jurassic Park who doesn't want to have kids and has to learn some things and uh, make some you know poor decisions. Uh, and Claire does exactly the same thing. And her first concern is we'll never reopen. And I know so many eyes rolled and so many people just shifted in their seats when she said that, but I absolutely love that because that just further solidifies her character, that she is so corporate and just that's all she knows and that's how she's trained. He sums up the video by saying that you know, these characters are, are bad role models for kids, essentially. And, but the only examples of their characters he gives is from the start of the movie where they're being idiots, where they are falling into tropes. And he doesn't show the evolution of the characters that is on screen, that is clearly written in the scripts. And by doing that, he's, he's bringing the film down for whatever reason. And I still don't really know why he actually doesn't like this film. So... There you go. That's right. She did. She didn't really ask for help. No. At all. At all. And even, and she saved Owen twice, and she didn't ask for help. No. So there's your strength. I mean. Here's a message from Cat, who clearly identifies with Claire. I really enjoyed your most recent podcast about how JP has helped us overcome adversity. I'm an executive director for a zoo in SoCal, and I'll be darned if I wasn't in the parking lot yesterday putting on my high heels. Yes high heels and repeating potential donors names in my head as I walked up to the front of the zoo to meet and convince them of our newest exhibit. My boyfriend is the operations director and I don't know the ages of my nephew and niece. What Jurassic World has taught me is to always have the phrase everyone remain calm ready to use at any given moment and that I probably should pay more attention to my family. Here's a few reactions to Claire as a hero from Twitter. From a non-social workaholic to saving people, clever thinking survivalist in 124 minutes, and she definitely grows into heroism. Yes, a hero is one that should risk his or her life for other people. And that's what Claire does in the end by releasing the T-Rex. She changed over the movie and admitted to her mistakes. She ran away from the Rex just to save people's lives. She develops as a character and continues to. She'll be in a different mindset come the start of JP5. Saving the day basically after luring the T-Rex from the paddock. Without her, the finale would have been completely different. So really, there you go, Mr. Hill. As you can now see, your video essay was just a flat out lie. Unfortunately, there are loads of people across the internet falling for your tricks and that's a shame. In a world where misinformation is spread every day, can't we just sit back and learn to enjoy a movie like Jurassic World? Anyway, that's about all I have for you in this end of the week episode. I just wanted to get this out and hope that maybe it will basically start raising questions on how we write video essays. Thanks and enjoy.